There we go. Hey guys, Dirt here. Just wanted to do a live stream real quick for two main reasons. One, I'm trying out this new uh, Mevo camera that I have. Uh, it's a live streaming camera. Um, it's designed to... The idea is it's supposed to be like a whole production studio in one tiny little camera. And you use an app to go along with it. And I have the app running over here. So I do stuff. Woo! Look at that. Or woo! Right in there. So, uh, it you know, it does allow you to do stuff where you move the camera around and you look at different stuff and whatever. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of test it out and try a live stream and see how it looks and see how the quality is, see how the sound comes through and all this kind of stuff. So, that. Um, and then I figure, as long as I'm testing it out, I'll talk about AEW Double or Nothing uh, from this past week and just talk a few notes about it. I'm sure we're going to cover it on the Transitional Champion podcast at some point in the future, but there's not going to be another one of those for a couple weeks. So um, so just some thoughts and, and, and stuff that I noticed from throughout the show. One, the show is really, really good. Um, if you have not seen it, it's worth seeing. Uh, I know it was a $50 buy-in, which is... it's almost unfathomable to think about paying money to see a wrestling pay-per-view in 2019 uh but it was it was worth it it was good um it's definitely it, it definitely brings a different feel back to professional wrestling uh it's very different from a wwe style show uh they still had some goofy moments in there and a couple matches were not as good as everything else uh, on the card um but you know overall it was good it, it was a it was it was a very good it was a very it was almost a great show uh i i guess i could go so far as to say um the the first thing i noticed when i pulled it up is that it looked professional like it looked like a real pay-per-view and what i mean is we've seen a lot of shows in the last couple of years from ROH and from New Japan and from Dragon's Gate and from Major League Wrestling. And, and I don't want to knock those promotions. Uh, I really like some of those promotions, TNA even. Um, you know, there are times that they're better than others and there are times that they have better talent than, than other times. Um, but overall, those all tend to look... They look, I don't want to say minor league, but they look like they're on a much lower level than WWE as far as production quality. Um, now, I don't want to get into the actual product necessarily, but when you, a, a lot of times when you look at those shows and you look at the arenas that they're in, the arenas are dark. It's almost pitch black when you look at the crowd because they don't want to show um, how small the venue is maybe that they're in or how, how few seats there are filled in the arena if you're TNA. Um, you know, they just have a, a much more claustrophobic look, whereas this was very bright. They lit the crowd. Um, a lot of times, like WWE does, with the crowd bathed in blue light or red light or whatever, depending on what was going on in the ring and, um, and that type of stuff. So it, it, it looked like a WWE show in that sense, where the production was really, really high. Uh, and, and that's one of those things that, you know, I, I like Major League Wrestling a lot. They're probably my favorite promotion right now, and and AEW may end up replacing that eventually. Um, but I, as much as I like Major League Wrestling, it still looks like a much smaller show. A lot of the venues that they use for doing the show are the same type of places you're going to see an ROH show or... Um, a Dragon's Gate or whatever, where you can tell it's a much smaller venue, um, and it it just it, it doesn't have the room to put like a big entryway um, or, or or anything like that. Uh, and, and so this had that look of a really big show in a big arena, an arena filled with people, um, and it, and it was it was surprising to see um, how professional it really looked. Now they did a pre-show. There were some problems with the pre-show. Uh, they called it the buy-in. Um, it was supposed to be on the TNT uh, YouTube streaming page and on the AEW streaming page. And uh, AEW had problems getting it to stream on their own YouTube page. Uh, TNT ran it fine, no problem. Uh, so, uh, you know, for a while there, I was actually watching on the TNT feed 
uh, not the AEW feed uh, because that's where it was working. Um, and again, it looked even though that was a production snafu, having a problem with it, you know, going to both feeds at the same time and working that out. It still looked on TV. It looked professional, like it looked like again a, a real event, which is. You know, again, I, I hate to say that against the other promotions, but but it really was a step up, uh, and it was really interesting. Um, you know, the battle royal was fine. There were some neat things that happened to it. It was fun to see some of the guys come out, um, but at the same time, it it did look like a cluster. Um, they did the weird thing with handing out cards, and then they were calling people down based on, you know, the cards that they had, and some people weren't coming out, um, and you know, it took, like, two or three minutes sometimes for guys to come out, so it was weird, had some issues there, uh, but whatever, um, and so what was it, Hangman, uh, Adam Page won, that was cool, um, they did, you know, some weird backstage stuff, there was Kylie Ray, who I'm not 100% familiar with, to me, she just seems like the the alternate universe Bailey. Um, I don't know if they train together. I don't know if they work together. What the you know what the deal is? But it's like um, you know it's like Batman and Moon Knight. Uh, you have uh, Bailey and Kylie Ray. Um, they're basically the same. Uh, which was weird because there were also two librarians. There was a, a guy librarian and the lady librarian, and they shushed each other. And it was it was goofy and it was dumb. But it was in the buy-in. It wasn't actually on the main show. I don't know if that's necessarily what you want to have on television uh, when it comes down to that, but like it's a goofy internet thing, it's fine, um, but it's whatever. Um, Kip Sabian, Sammy Guevara, it, it was a good match. Um, I, I don't know, like it, it was one of those matches that was a lot of spots and not necessarily a lot of psychology. Um, so looking at it that way, you know, it was fine. Um, they showed Jim Ross showing up. They showed Cody arriving. Uh, you know, they, they did all of this stuff that, again, has that professional wrestling look to it. Um, but, but again, it, it looked good. Like, the video was crisp. The sound was uh, on timed on cue. It wasn't, um, you know, like a lot of times, uh, I forget which one it was. It was like Legends of Wrestling or, or one of those where they, they had like a, two minute backstage video and they showed like a minute and a half before the sound finally kicked in you know and you didn't really have those type problems you had a uh, some little bit of extra echo and whatever but um they did this weird thing where uh they had cody and the young bucks and brandy and uh kenny omega all came out and they were talking to the crowd they were welcoming me and, and you know they were passing the microphone back and forth or snatching it out of each other's hands i guess um and right in the middle of talking, the pre-show faded out. And that was your cue. Oh, crap, that's right. I need to you know, watch this on the, the show feed. Um, and it was weird that they did it right in the middle. And I guess that's to help entice you to, like, I want to follow this. Uh, but it was just kind of awkward the way they did that. Um, we had SoCal Uncensored versus The Strong Hearts, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, Scorpio Sky versus Seema, T-Hawk, and El Lindemann. It was good. This match was... Actually, Christopher Daniels is one of those guys where I usually like his wrestling. I don't always like his gimmicks. Like, when he was doing the Fallen Angel thing and he was doing it pretty hard and he was, like, super emo goth with it, and that, it's like, dude, no. <laughs> like, no. Um, but having met him several times, um, he worked with the guys of Oh Yeah Comics... Um, and they did some comics that they were promoting at uh, different comic conventions and stuff. So I got to talk to them a number of times. Um, really nice guys, you know. Um, and, and again, I like the way they wrestle. They still call Christopher, Christopher Daniels the Fallen Angel because he's kind of just kind of kept the name. But the whole emo gimmick thing is dropped, which I'm, I'm, I'm happy with. Uh, but this is a really good match. It was really strong. It was high energy. Um, this was the type of thing to get your crowd, you know, pumped up and into it at the beginning of the show. Uh, they did a women's match. You had Britt Baker, Nyla Rose, Kylie Ray, and Awesome Kong. Awesome Kong was a surprise guest, came in. It was great to see her again. She still uh, is really good in the ring. Kylie Ray, she's whatever. 
Britt Baker, I knew she was a dentist, and I knew that they, you know, played on that, but I wasn't exactly sure, like, her gimmick, was she going to come out doing, like, this Isaac Yankum type stuff or whatever? And no, that that didn't really come out. Um, Nyla Rose was the really the link, uh, the weakest link in this match. Um, she just is not... Um, I don't even know the right term. Uh, it's like watching Abyss do cartwheels. She, she's just... Like, Abyss can do a cartwheel, but you watch him do the cartwheel, and it's it's lumbering, and it's big, and it's kind of slow, and it's sloppy, and you're just like, well, you know, <laughs> I bet you five bucks you couldn't do a cartwheel, so here, I owe you the five bucks, but don't ever do one again. That's what Nyla Rose was. Like, she got out there, and she just wasn't good. Just wasn't refined, wasn't smooth, botched a bunch of spots, her timing was way off, and she just had that look of, like, you know, there, there are Samoans who are big, but they're, and, and they might even have a gut and a big belly, but they're not, like, fat, you know, whereas she just came across as, like, somebody who was just out of shape and didn't really know what they were doing, um, so... Uh, phew. I know they wanted someone big for Awesome Kong and this big face-off whatever, um, and that's fine, but I, I hope she's not used a whole lot because she's just not good um, at all. All right. Um, let's see. Chuck Taylor, Trent Beretta versus Angelico and Jack Evans. Uh, this is a really good tag match. Uh, this was one, um, again, a lot of spots and less psychology. Um, maybe a little more than what we saw earlier, um, but still a good match. Again, high energy, and it really brought you back up after how bad the, the last match had been. Um, so, you know, it was fine. Uh, there was the six-way, um, or the six-person, three-on-three tag match. Uh, it was all, I, I believe they're all Japanese. And I'm just going to say Japanese. I'm, I'm trying to look to see. I don't know if any of them are actually... Chinese or Korean or whatever, but I'm going to say Japanese. Um, and it was okay. Uh, it went on way too long. Uh, it got really sloppy again at different parts. Um, it's, th there was nothing in the match that made me... Well, no, anyway, I take that back. Because there was one... One of them came out with two belts. I forget who that was. Um, and she was really good. I remember... Uh, she was very acrobatic uh, and, and had, a, had a way of maintaining her, her balance and poise in a way that shows that she's naturally gymnastic or, or naturally uh, just highly coordinated uh, compared to some other people. Um, but the rest of them, it was just like, mm, it was whatever. And again, it went on, it went on a little too long. Uh, let's see, we had Cody versus Dustin, Gold Dust, whatever. Uh, red dust. Uh, they did the part where they smashed the uh, Triple H throne. That was really fun. That was one of those things that it was, <laughs> you know, it, definitely it's 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 a call out to to WWE. It's a call out to Triple H. It's a call out to the fact that WWE couldn't find really anything for Cody or Gold Dust to do for the last couple years, and they just had them scrounging around and doing whatever because they couldn't come up with anything. And then these guys went out. They had a hell of a match. This match was incredible. This was a WrestleMania caliber, WrestleMania, even WrestleMania main event uh, caliber match. This is one of those matches, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this would be one of the top three WWE matches of the year if this happened on one of their pay-per-views. This would have been one, this match would have been perfect in somewhere in, in, in 1999, 2000, 2001, when WWE was doing a lot of those hot pay-per-views uh, with really good stuff. This was a great match. Uh, Gold Dust is like 50 years old. He doesn't look, uh, honestly, um, and, and part of that, I think, is just his look, his expression. He's always, he's got that kind of, um, I want to say it's like weathered. Um, skin almost in a way, almost like he, he, I don't know if he rides a lot of horses through the desert <laughs> or whatever, uh, but kind of like a Longmire, 
Uh, if you've ever seen the TV show Longmire, the guy who plays on there, it's like you can't really guess his age. Like you can tell he's older than 40, um, but not really, you know, where exactly he's going to fall in there um, because he doesn't look old. And in this match, he didn't look old. They had Bret Hart come out. That was cool. Uh, they had MJF come out, which MJF is one of those guys. Um, he he is a he's a breakout star. He's going to be big. Uh, that guy is awesome, um, and I've seen him on a bunch of other stuff. He is fantastic. Jungle Boy came out, who is Luke Perry's son, uh, the guy from 90210. This is his son, um, skinny young kid, but you know potential, whatever. Uh, they did a whole bunch of fun stuff like that, but they showed off. They had Bret Hart eventually show off the belt. And the belt is very Joshi inspired. It is a very Japanese looking belt. It it would fit in a lot of those type promotions. It's it's big, it's silver metallic, there's lots of jewels and there's lots of little detail and lots of just kind of design, as opposed to where, you know, uh, American belts have a tendency to be more iconic. There's a logo, there's an eagle, there's a globe, there's a flag, there's, um, you know, just something like right in the middle that the things kind of build out from. This had the AEW logo on it, but it was more of a, of a overall presentation piece as opposed to American belts that tend to be focused right in the middle with some details flaring out from it. So it's a very interesting looking belt. Uh, and, and big. They had the Young Bucks uh, versus the Lucha Brothers for the uh, AAA World Tag Team Championships. Uh, this is another thing. Uh, uh, several people, uh, I want to say that in the, the, the Japanese women's match, there were a couple people that had belts. Um, they talked about some other title somewhere. They had these guys with the AAA belts. AEW is not trying to ignore that other promotions exist the way WWE does. You know, WWE... You hear him talk about Sting, and they were like, Sting was the big guy at WCW, and Sting was all over WCW. And then he came back after 15 years. You know, they just kind of ignore the whole TNA thing. They don't want to mention it. They don't want to bring it up. Um, so in, in, in that sense, AEW is more like an indie where they acknowledge other promotions' titles. Um, and these guys were fighting for the other promotions' title, um, which is interesting. Um, and it's something you have to do if you don't really have your own belts and you haven't really established them yet. So I understood why they do it. The, the one thing, though, I did feel like this went a little too long. And I say that only because they kept teasing a false finish. They did it once. They did it twice. They did it a third time. They did it a fourth time. They did it a fifth time. You know, and then finally it was the go home. And it was one of those where... The first one happens and they kick out. You're like, okay. And then the second one happens and you're like, all right, let's not do too much of this. The third one happens and you're like, that probably should have been the end. And then they do it again and then they do it again. It gets to a point where if you're just kicking out of everything, then none of it matters. It's only going to end because you want it to end, not because anything has any sort of real sense of finality to it. Now, now saying that, the final go-home was really cool, the way they orchestrated it, but... It, it, it's just one of those things where you, you tease it too many times and it just kind of wears everybody out. And, and that was my only problem with this match. I, I wish they had cut out three of the five uh, you know, false finishes uh, just to make it a little more impactful uh, when they actually go for it. Um, Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega. This was great. I am not the world's biggest fan of Chris Jericho. A lot of people know that, although a lot of the stuff that I didn't like about Chris Jericho, he doesn't do anymore. A lot of his, uh, you know, purposely mispronouncing words uh, in his promos, calling people by the wrong name, um, the way he just used to scream in his promos, and he wasn't even screaming anything interesting, he was just being loud. Uh, and, and he's gotten away from that. Uh, especially the last couple times that he's come back in WWE. He did the list. When he came out, he was wearing the suits, you know, for a long time, being really cleaned up, whatever. Now he looks like um, a cross between um, Mickey Rourke from The Wrestler and Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. I don't know exactly what look he's going for. 
it's interesting. Um, but the two of them had a fantastic match. Uh, they had the weirdest looking folding table. It was a, a black, perfect rectangle. Uh, it looked like the monolith from 2001 Space Odyssey. And it had these weird legs uh, that were like H's. It did not look like any folding table you would walk into a store and buy. This looked like something that maybe someone had built. And, and I don't know why. Um, it was a little shorter than a regular table. I don't know if they got a deal on it. They stopped at the Goodwill uh, in Vegas and happened to find it there. I don't know, you know what exactly, but it was weird. Um, but the match overall, it was good. Then, of course, Jericho wins, gets on the mic, you know, harping at the crowd, and in comes uh, Moxley, John Moxley, uh, who is Dean Ambrose. Uh, you know, doesn't say anything. Attacks him, attacks Kenny Omega, attacks the referee. Uh, takes Kenny Omega and you know drags him out. They're fighting in the crowd, whatever, and they fight at the entryway. And then he tosses him onto a. Uh, there's a big crash pad, and they just put like a little plywood box or something over it. So he flips Kenny Omega, and you're like, oh my gosh, he threw him over the edge. But then he he really landed on a crash pad, so uh, it was fine. But the show was was really good. Uh, it, it it really. This, you know, the, the, there is the fact that hey, you've got this other company that's coming in and they're going to be attacking WWE and they're going for the same crowd and they're, you know, going to try to do things better and that's fine. And you kind of want them to win because you're tired of WWE and a lot of the product and a lot of the stuff they do. But like I said, you look at a lot of these other companies. I like Major League Wrestling. I think it's a really fun show. It has a lot of good wrestling, but it does look low budget. Um, ROH nine times out of ten maybe eight times out of ten, it's a really good show. Um, but they do have some stinkers in there. Impact Impact goes in these ups and downs. It's weird. Right now, it's pretty good. Uh, four months ago, it was really terrible. Uh, six months before that, it was pretty good. It's I don't, I don't know what it is with them, but they, they fluctuate and go back and forth. But they all look small. And this looked big. This looked real. Uh, and, and, and getting that across on television, I think, is very important. Um, the fact that they were able to make it look so good and make it look so professional and make it look so big is really going to help, I think, push the promotion in the eyes of a lot of people. So anyway, um, like I said, I just wanted to kind of talk about this stuff and kind of throw it out there because I know it's going to be a while before we do a traditional champion, uh, tran transitional champion podcast again. Um, and also I wanted to try out this new streaming camera and... I got my mic up here, and I just kind of wanted to get an idea of how it looked, how it sounded, um, and see if I've got... I've been playing around with a lot of the settings and messing with it, and I just wanted to see how this was going to come across uh, talking and letting the camera kind of do its thing, the way it zooms in and zooms out and cuts and does some of that other stuff. So, anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Later, Tater.